one thing you want to get is that whatever you think you're arguing about is actually the adjutant. Right? That couples tend to really only have one fight that goes in flare and remission. And whatever the topic is, is actually triggering a fight that is continuing through your relationship. And that at the bottom of most fights, there is some form of emotional disconnection that's occurring. Right? Whether it's being, I'm not feeling adequate, right? um, I'm going to feel abandoned, I'm not feeling supported, right? I'm not feeling like if I really need you, you're going to be there, I'm in this all by myself. Right? So the primal panic. Um, one thing you want to get about what happens when you get into to arguments with each other, the things start getting heated and escalated is that your brain is wired to go into a form of panic when this primary relationship that you're in is feeling like there's going to be a rupture in it. Right? And I just want to normalize that. You have to get that when there's a threat to the relationship, it's biological for people to start to go into defensive mode, to attack mode. Right? Their anxiety goes up, their stress level goes up. And we can't judge this, we just have to be able to recognize it as it is, and again, figure out how to soothe. Now, the tricky piece is that when this starts kicking in, we go into distress mode, and we don't know how to take care of each other, and things start escalating. This cycle starts to occur in the relationship that we'll study in detail next week. And the, the the unfortunate piece about this cycle is it pulls couples out of this idea of we are in this together, right, which is that idea that I was talking about before, where you have to have this couple commitment. And it pulls them into adversarial roles, right, where couples start seeing themselves as the as enemy to each other. And when we go in this place of enemy, this is when we fall into these patterns of anger and criticism and demands, right, uh, ultimatums. Um, or we go into the, this is kind of an attack mode. I'm going to come at you to try to get you to do something. On the other end, we can end up going into distancing, um, unavailability, aloofness, sort of this disconnection, um, hyper-rationality. Like, why don't you just think about this for a moment? Because you, you just, this is crazy. Like, why do you have to be so irrational about it? Right? You got one person who's like, ah, and the other person's like, well, I can't understand why you're being so irrational. Right? This person who's in this kind of distance, aloof, hyper-rational mode, um, if you hook them up to a heart monitor, right, they're actually super activated as well. It's just as one person goes up, they go down. Right? And, it's, and, it's, and it's just as <coughs> much of a um, reactionary um, strategic stra coping strategy as the kind of yelling person is. And the ability to tune in and offer emotional support and comfort. This part about tuning in is a huge piece. The, and it, it's, it's something you really got to practice, especially when the heat of the moment comes in with the fight. Because what happens when we get into a fight is there's this distress that we're feeling, and we want that taken care of. But if we only go into kind of our own place of this is where I'm at, <coughs> and we can't simultaneously tune into this is where my partner's at, whatever that distressful thing is that's happening between us, if we can't tune into each other, we can't address it. Right? Now, the good news is, is that people really only have like three or four buttons. So if you learn what your partner's buttons are, and you learn how to tune in, and you learn how to operate your partner, whenever distress enters the relationship, it's just like, oh, I recognize that. And here, let me, all better, OK. Right? And then you can go do your separate things. But why is this so damn hard? So the barriers. So the first piece is that there's often an insight barrier. Right? We haven't. There aren't a lot of, of, of lessons out there that really kind of teach people to look at how do I examine what I actually really need deep on that deeper level. Right? Hopefully this course takes you there. This one's tricky too for folks. The ability to accept <coughs> and ask for our needs. When I 
first entered therapy, there was one moment my therapist was talking to me about a need I had. And I'm like, I don't wake up having needs. He's like, no, you, you, you do have needs. You, this is something you need. I'm like, no, I don't have needs. He's like, Craig, everybody has needs. I'm like, I, why do you keep saying that? I don't have needs. Why are you getting so upset, Craig? What are you talking about? He goes, Craig, your hands are in fists. <laughs> and I was just like, oh my God, right? And I, when I sat with him, I was like, yeah, I would rather punch him in the face than admit that I have needs, right? What does that say about my childhood? Anyway, um, <laughs> let me get why my relationships failed as well. So even this ability, one, to even know what they are, but two, to be able to accept it and admit it to another person? Mm, scary, right? The ability to accept and tune into another person's needs, right? This can be really tricky. Again, this idea of the owner's manual. You know, if we haven't learned in life how to actually see through all the, the smoke and flame and like, oh wait, I know what's really going on here, right? And if we haven't learned how to tune, um, to actually soothe and comfort our partners, how to show up for our partners, there's a deficit there, 